What's up guys, Asian here again with another PTS video. So this is a re-upload of the Shadow Mundus video. Uh, I did receive feedback that you guys found the voice to be a, my voice a little bit too low on this new mic, so I did make a couple of adjustments. So hopefully you guys will be able to hear me over the background music now. Hopefully you guys will be able to hear me a little bit more clearly as well. I am still kind of working on the whole presenter voice. I know a lot of people have given feedback about uh, either my voice is too soft or I'm using a lot of ums or kind of what I call space fillers. Um, I do have, just like I just used there actually, I do have some a little bit of training in kind of public speaking, but now any sort of formal training. I did used to I work a little bit as a radio disc jockey back in college, and obviously I'm in a doctoral program, and part of that is learning how to you know publicly present your research and things like that. So I am trying to be a little bit more aware of when I'm using space fillers like ums and ahs and things like that. Uh, so please bear with me while I'm kind of going through this process. YouTube was kind of just sort of like a side project for me. I never really intended it to really take off like it has, uh, but now I am fully invested in it, so I am going to try my darndest to kind of make sure uh, that my quality of the video still is is good, especially on the audio side of things. I'm not really much of an audio guy. I'm more, as you can tell, more of a stats, computery, coding kind of guy, so audio is not really uh, my, my main thing here. But anyways, on to the video. So much like the video that uh, this video is replacing, we're going to be talking about the Shadow Mundus buff here and how pretty much it's good, looking like it's going to be the Mundus choice of Mundus of choice for pretty much most DPS specs uh, in the game right now. So I am on my building metric calculator here. There will be a link down in the description below for those of you guys who do want to use this calculator yourself. Uh, you will need to make a copy, so if you just go up to file, hit make a copy, and then you can name your copy and you can save it under a Google Drive. So you will, I think you do need to have a Gmail account in order to make a copy and to use Google Drive. I might be mistaken there. Um, so you will need to make a copy if you do want to edit it yourself. It will still have all the formulas and you will have that toggleable button for the Wrathstone values there. So if you do want to use this, again, description link in the description below. So we're just going to go right into it here. Now there's going to basically going to be four different scenarios that we're going to be interested in. So the first one is obviously going to be if you are a trick class like a Nightblade or a Templar and you're a Khajiit. So you have the additional crit damage and you have the additional crit chance. The next uh, next thing is obviously if you're a crit class with not being a Khajiit, in this case we're going to be using Orc for Stamina and we're going to be using um, High Elves for Magicka. And then non-crit class as a Khajiit, so no crit damage but we still have the additional crit chance. And then not a crit class and not a Khajiit, so we're losing out that 8% crit as well as that 10% additional crit damage here. So. I will also go over the assumptions that we're making here for Magic and Stamina DPS. So for Magic DPS, we're assuming that we are running Imperfect Sororia, so we have two max Magic bonuses because we do lose one uh, from not using Perfect Sororia. For our modifiers, we are assuming that we do have Warhorn up at all times. We're on our front bar, so we have Inner Light and Magic Controller. I did kind of waver back and forth between having two Magic uh, Mage's Guild abilities on our front bar versus one. I just decided to stick with one for the time being, just because certain classes will not be having Meteor on the front bar at all. We are going 5 on one so we do have 6% from Undaunted Metal. And then we do are doing 8% for Nightblades. Uh, and then for our non- our non-crit class, uh, we will be dropping that 8%. Uh, we could keep it as well because Sorks do have that additional 8% as well. Uh, but Sorks also have an additional spell modifi spell damage modifiers. Um, so we're just going to drop the 8% when we do our non-crit class. Uh, just because none of the crit classes, none of the non-crit classes have 8% except for Sorks. We are using Mother Sorrow as our front bar set here. And that gives us this value here. Our actual max crit would be a little bit higher than this, but we are assuming that we're not going to be on our front bar the whole time. We don't have 100% uptime on that uh, Mother Sorrow crit, additional crit. So that's kind of what we're sitting at. We're going to be sitting at about 0.662, or because we are going to be looking at Khajiits first, it does bump it up 8% up to 0.742. Uh, crit damage, we are assuming we're getting 22% from Elfborn or Precise Strikes for stamina DPS. And we are assuming we have 33% uptime on Major Force, so we have an additional 0 0.05 added onto this. So without Major Force, we'd be sitting at 0 0.92, uh, but we are adding in that additional Major Force uptime there. We are going 7 Divines for Magicka and Stamina DPS. So for Magicka, you can run uh, 3 Infused and 4 Divines if you would like. Again, if you want to play around with that, go down in the description below, 
save a copy of the calculator and kind of adjust these values accordingly. And then we are assuming we have three spell damage and chance here. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that we are basically ignoring the sustain portion. We are assuming that we're able to fully sustain our uh, DPS here. We are assuming we're able to hit the max penetration that we need, 18,200 here. 100% uptime and minor vulnerability, 100% uptime and minor berserk, 100% uptime and minor slayer. We have 30% additional damage from elemental expert. We are using our Rastone values here. So this is on a Khajiit, so we are a Khajiit, and so we do have our average crit chance is 0.742 or 74% or so. Average crit damage is 0.97 based on our assumptions here. And just looking, uh, taking a look at our Mundus options here, it does seem like the Shadow is winning out over the other options. The next closest would be the Apprentice, and we're about 3k or so higher than the Apprentice. So mental math, uh, we're looking at roughly 1.6% increase uh, in ability metric comparing the Shadow to the Apprentice here. Which, again, this is a building metric, this is not DPS. We will have to do DPS testing, both solo and raid buffed parses to kind of get an idea of where the Shadow and the Apprentice stand in comparison to each other. But this does give us sort of an idea of what we can reasonably anticipate when we do those parses. So it does seem like mathematically, Shadow is winning out over all the other four Mundus options here. You will notice here that uh, just looking at this, the Mage is actually stronger than the Thief now. Uh, and that's just because the Mage is affected by CP as a 4.3.2. So that does give the Mage a little bit of an additional boost here because now we have the Mage, uh, the Mage bonus, the base amount, multiplied by divines and then on top of the cps and all of our modifiers uh the one thing that i do will make note of here is that we're not 100 percent certain whether the cp modifier is additive or multiplicative with the other modifiers yet the pts is still as of the recording of this video not live so i have not been able to double check on the uh, pts server um, but I am assuming that it is additive right now. There's no reason to assume that it is not. But again, Zoss might just say it's actually multiplicative with the other modifiers. We're just shifting all the flat bonuses to the front of the equation uh, before uh, we include all the CP and other Max Magicka modifiers here. So this is uh, Khajiit on a crit class. So let's assume we're Khajiit on a non-crit class. So let's say we're on a DK or a Sork or a Warden. We don't have the 10% additional crit damage. So we drop that down by 10% here. And we see that the Shadow is still ahead of the Apprentice by still about 3.6k. Uh, so it's a little bit over 2% in terms of ability metric difference. So again, not a direct comparison in DPS, but mathematically it does seem like Shadow is pushing ahead of the Apprentice by a noticeable margin, particularly with ability metric here. So now let's assume that we are not a Khajiit. So like I said earlier, we're going to assume that we are an Altmer. So we have that 2k additional max magicka and the 258 additional base uh, spell damage. Non-crit class, so we do also have to drop our crit chance because we no longer are a Khajiit, so we don't have the additional 8% crit. Non-crit class, so our crit damage is still at 0.87. And we can see here that the Shadow is still ahead of the Apprentice, again, by about 3.4k, so roughly 2% increase in ability metric here. Now if we go ahead and add in a 10% for a crit class, like a Knight Leader or a Templar, we do see that it is still ahead of the Apprentice here, again, by about 3 point, actually it's almost 3k exactly, uh, so again, by about 1.6%, just mental mathing it right now. So. It does seem like, in terms of mathematics, in terms of the theoreticals, Shadow is ahead of the Apprentice, Thief, and the Mage is way ahead of the Lover, obviously, because we're assuming we're able to hit, get the max penetration value there. Um, so yeah, if you if these changes do go through, it look, does look like Shadow is going to be the Mundus of choice for Magic DPS. But again, this is dependent on whether these changes do stick and they do make it on to live. All right, so now let's go ahead and shift over to stamina DPS instead. So again, we are using the Rastone values here. Exact same, pretty much the exact same uh, assumptions here in terms of buffs, debuffs, things like that. We have all of our weapon damage buffs here. We have all of our uh, max stamina buffs here. We are going 7 medium, so we only have 2% from Undaunted Metal. Uh, and then again, we are using Orc as our non-Khajiit race, and then Khajiits obviously is our race. In terms of... Uh, armor sets and things like that, we're assuming that we're running Perfected Reliquin as well as Advanced Yokata. Um, so that's what we're taking a look at here, and then our Monster Helm set is Veladreth. 
So that's where all of these assumptions come into play. The other thing too is that we are assuming that we're running Nurn Precise, so we have Nurn main hand, Precise offhand. That does seem like where dual wield traits are going to be going as of Wrathstone. Again, this might change depending on how they rebalance things out, but that's the assumption that we are going to stick with for right now. So we are going to be starting off with non kajit so Orcs on a crit class it looks like, so we do have that 10% additional crit chance there. Now, the average penetration I'm using here is actually the amount of penetration you can get from all of the debuffs that you're able to get uh, in the game right now. So that is Major Fracture, 5280. We have Alkosh, 3010. We have Infused Torx Crusher, 2740. And we have Minor Fracture, which is 1320. That's where we get the 12,350 from. Now, obviously, this is not including CP or anything like that, but this is the kind of base penetration that we're going to be using for stamina and DPS. Now, for Magicka DPS, the base penetration is obviously going to be a little bit different. So we have 5280, Major Breach, 1320, Minor Breach, Alkosh, 3010, Use Throgs Crusher, 2740, and then we also have our Light Iron Passive, that's 4884. So our, really, our base should be around 17.2k instead, but... Um, that is our base for magic DPS, so really there's no reason to run Lover, uh, as opposed to on a stamina DPS, where obviously we do want to run Lover because we are shy of that 18,200 there. So that's where this average penetration value comes in. Now, we can see here that the Lover is ahead of the Shadow by a little bit here, just shy of 1k or so, though that's about mental mathing it. Um, that's about half a percentage point there. So if you're not a Khajiit and you are in a crit, crit class, then it does seem like the Lover is mathematically stronger than the Shadow, but the difference is pretty small overall. And if you're able to add in a maybe, let's say, 2k or so additional penetration from like CP or something, or maybe like 1.5k, so we're sending it like, uh, it would be 13,850. Um, the lover still is a little bit of a head here, so in order to kind of find the break even point, you just have to slowly increase the penetration value. Uh, once you hit 14100, that's kind of where the ability metric for the lover will no longer start to climb because you're now you're at the cap with the lover. So it does seem like if the lover does bring you up the penetration cap, uh, basically the higher your average penetration is, it does seem like the stronger. The shadow is compared to the lover so obviously if we say we have full penetration then obviously the shadow is going to be much stronger than the lover because there's no more increase uh, from the lover here so we're going back down to our base penetration value here now let's assume that we do not have the additional crit damage here the difference is much much smaller now it's only about 30 or so a little bit shy of 40 in terms of ability metrics so that is pretty much negligible if we want the actual math it would be uh, let's see 10 1 set a tenth of a percent, one one hundredth of a percent. So two one hundredths of a percentage point, roughly, is the difference there. So really, really small. You can pretty much call it zero. So if you are a non kajit you are in a non crit class, then the difference between the lover and the shadow on um, base penetration value before CP and any CP and piercing does seem like it doesn't really matter which one you choose. So now let's go ahead and take a look at kitty cats. Take a look at what kajits are able to do. So we do need to add in. The additional 8% crit chance here. We're assuming we're non crit first, so 87% additional crit damage. Base penetration value does seem like the shadow is ahead of the lover now, so we're taking a look at about a 1k difference, which would be about half a percentage point increase in ability metric. Again, not that big of a deal here, uh, but it still s shows that mathematically the shadow is pushing out ahead, at least on a Khajiit. And if we go ahead and add in that crit damage from a crit class, difference is a lot smaller here. So again, it's about 40 difference, which is again, two one hundredths of a decimal point. So pretty much nothing. Um, but it does seem like the shadow is a very strong Mundus option for stamina DPS, particularly once you start to add in additional penetration value uh, from running you know, CP into piercing, maybe you ha you're running twice bang snake or something, but then that would also affect other things down the line, so maybe not so that, uh, but it does seem like the Shadow is a fairly strong Mundus option for stamina DPS under certain scenarios. Obviously the Lover is still going to be pretty beneficial in certain scenarios, I'm just thinking trash pulls maybe, you want the additional penetration instead of the additional crit damage, um, but it does seem like the Shadow, the buff that they provide to the Shadow in 4.3.2 is pretty strong. I would hazard to say that they actually overbuffed it a little bit. I would like to see it maybe toned down instead of the 13%, maybe 11% instead. Um, but, I mean, 
We are min-max, we're kind of the meta chasers. This is a kind of a meta PvE channel, so mathematically, it does seem like the shadow is going to be the modus of choice for your magic DPS, for stamina DPS. It's a little bit murkier. It does seem like lover and shadow are both pretty much toe-to-toe -to -toe with each other, so you do have a few options there, but shadow definitely got a pretty large buff, and if you're a Khajiit, it's, again, a very very strong buff so as a non-Khajiit we didn't see the shadow beat out the lover on stamina DPS but with a Khajiit we do see the lover, the shadow do win out over the lover so the Khajiits definitely got a really really nice DPS buff this patch which from a lore perspective doesn't really make much sense I kind of already went over this uh, in yesterday's video on the PTS patch notes video um, so interesting to see how they are going to justify this and whether this will push all the way through to live. I don't think it will. I think they're going to rebalance things again. I don't see them. I can't see them not rebalancing things, but then again, Zas has done uh, some really strange things in the past. So let's keep an eye open on the PTS and hopefully they will make a few more adjustments here for balance. So that way the Khajiits are not the number one DPS uh, race for both Magicka and Stamina. So that is going to be it for this video. Again, please leave down in the comment section below any sort of feedback you have on audio, whether this was a good uh, level or not in terms of like the balance between background music and my voice. Hopefully you guys found this video informative. Uh, link in the description below for a the link to the calculator here. Again, you will need to make a copy in order to edit it yourself. I do update this periodically, typically whenever uh, the, and the, a new DLC is released on the PTS. I will typically update things here and there. Uh, Usually, most of the changes will be happening uh, on live, uh, so once the PTS cycle is over and the next DLC hits live, that's usually when I will push through all the new updates, just because obviously PTS things can change here, but I, and this is kind of an exception. Uh, I typically do try to update it throughout the PTS cycle as well, and I will include this toggleable so you guys will be able to decide whether you want to do the DLC that's on the PTS, look at the PTS changes, or just use the live values instead. Again, hopefully you guys found this video informative, and I'll see you guys in the next dungeon.